In order to determine the thickness of the balloon skin, we are going to apply some principles that are covered in ASCN 1022 and ASCN 3112. Some of you haven't had 1022, and 3112 is a junior level course, so I'm going to summarize the relevant details as they pertain to this balloon design. First, we will assume that the thickness of the balloon is less than 10% of the radius. This assumption will allow us to apply thin-walled pressure vessel relationships, namely that the normal stress is given by the equation provided. This equation states that the stress, which has units of force per unit area, is equal to the gauge pressure, the pressure differential between the inside and outside of the vessel, multiplied by the radius, divided by two times the thickness. Now we are dealing with zero pressure balloons, so you might think that gauge pressure should be zero. But in fact, the pressure differential between the inside and outside of the balloon is a non-zero, but very small value, typically on the order of 10 pascals, which is what we'll assume for this balloon design. Now that you can determine the stress inside the material, we need to compare that to the material properties to make sure the system doesn't fail. Two important parameters are the ultimate strength and the yield strength. The ultimate strength is the maximum stress the material can withstand before it fails. Similarly, the yield strength is the amount of stress the material can withstand before it begins to permanently deform. We will use the yield strength for our design. We want to relate the stress and the yield strength using a safety factor, which basically says how much stronger the material is than what we will be expecting of it. On the next slide, we'll look at how to tie these concepts together to get at something meaningful for our design. Using the relationships on the previous slide, we can derive the relationship between the factor of safety and thickness. For your design, you will observe how increasing and decreasing the safety factor will impact the final size, lifting capacity, and overall cost of the balloon system. You will need to use internet resources to find the relevant material properties for your design. You should observe the effects of using different materials to determine a suitable choice. A few things to note. Stress and strength may be used for material properties on the internet. This quote from Dr. Wingate should help you understand the difference and determine the credibility of an online source. Dr. Wingate said, strength is a property of the material and stress is a state the material is in. So stress is something that we can calculate given some conditions that we expect the material to be in and strength is simply a property of the material. Now, typically in designing a system like this, we would do material testing in-house to determine the actual true yield strength. We wouldn't put a lot of trust in internet sources. We would reasonably trust the manufacturer, but in a real full-scale system, we would want to ensure that the values that we use for our design are true and as accurate as possible. Material science isn't the focus of this particular class, so we'll use the discovered values from the internet but you should recognize that the uncertainty is high on these values and you should design accordingly by potentially increasing the safety factor based on the credibility of the source. We can provide approximate values for you to use as a sanity check. The last piece to the design derivation is how to determine the parameters of a gas knowing other parameters. This is where we'll apply the ideal gas law. The lecture will cover this in more detail in the coming weeks, but I'm going to touch on the aspects that apply to the design of the balloon so you may advance in your design process. The lecture will we'll cover in detail when you may assume a gas is ideal, but we will assume that the gases associated with this design lab can be assumed ideal. You will see that this is a valid assumption. You may have heard pivnert or something like that from a chemistry class. So this may be a review, but I'll keep this quick. The expression PV equals NRT is an approximation to the state of a gas that allows us to find certain properties if two other properties are known. More specifically, for an ideal gas, we say the pressure multiplied by the volume equals the number of moles multiplied by the universal gas constant multiplied by the temperature of the gas. You may recall the mole, which is simply a number of things. Specifically, Avogadro's number of those things, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now please don't confuse this number with the avocado number, which is a number of things in a guacamole. 
and that doesn't apply to ideal gases. Now in the ideal gas law expression, the universal gas constant is used along with the number of moles. While this is useful to chemists, it is more convenient for us to use the specific gas constants so we can write the ideal gas law in terms of density, pressure, the specific gas constant, and the temperature. You should recall that the force balance equation uses the densities, so this expression of the ideal gas law is useful for our design. This concludes this video explaining week three's primary tasks, as well as the use of the ideal gas law and thin-walled pressure vessels for the design of a high-altitude design. I hope this has been helpful.